How to make a vintage Bassett Loke steam plant work again, part 7. Refitting the cylinder cladding and piping up the steam plant. And before I forget, I think it's a good idea to lubricate the engine because this engine spent quite a lot of time in a bath of cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner if you live in the USA. You may notice that I've refitted some oil cups. Originally there was only one oil cup fitted and it was a really big lump of a thing. I was going to copy the original and just make another one but it didn't look good to start with. But then I thought well no I have some of these really nice oil cups from 21st century steam. I'll use a couple of those and they look much more in scale with the engine. In this sequence of video clips as you can see I really am going over the top with the oiling because it's very dry indeed. I'm making sure that I miss none of the working parts. The silicone rubber o-ring that I originally fitted to the filler cap of the displacement lubricator was not a good fit, it was far too big. So now I'm fitting a smaller one. The problem with silicone o-rings is if they are too big and you put too much pressure on the filler cap, the o-ring squeezes out of the side, but this one won't, it's a perfectly good fit. It's time now to refit the cylinder cladding that I painted a while back and I started off with the centerpiece that covers the two pieces of pipe but then I realised no this has to go on afterwards. The design of the cylinder cladding for this engine is quite well thought out. What it's made out of is some sort of quite springy steel, I don't think it's mild steel, it's very springy and it just snaps into place. But unfortunately the centre part which takes this small cover is not really the right size and shape and there's a bit of a gap and it looks horrible. I'll deal with that very shortly. It's time now to fit the cylinder covers. Well the cylinder covers are already fitted, the proper ones. These are cylinder cover covers and they're actually called domes of silence. And research tells me, or should I say viewers on YouTube tell me, that these are designed to be fastened to the bottom of furniture so that the furniture slides about more easily on the carpet. But in this case, the doubling as cylinder covers. And they had quite a nice look to this small engine. Originally the cylinder cladding was in a bit of a state. At the end of this video I show the engine running as I first received it. This is a quarter by 40 union nut fitted to the pipe. I modified this because the original thread arrangement was damaged and I thought it was a better idea to use commercial fittings. I'm removing this union nut and also the union nut and union cone on top of the boiler, the one on the tap, because I'm going to silver solder a pipe into these two parts and join them together. This pipe is 5 30 seconds of an inch pipe and it's quite a tight fit in the top union. What I had to do is drill it out very, very slightly but that's maybe because it's still full of silver solder from when I unsilver soldered it from the original pipe. When I fitted this tap back into the top of the boiler, it ended up with the union facing backwards, which is not what I want. There's a slotted area in the top of the cast iron base of the boiler, which needs to accept the pipe. The pipe goes through this slot and down through the fire and then out of the bottom and goes to the steam engine. I need this tap to have the steam union pointing towards me from this angle. And no, that's wrong. I'm doing this by fitting shim washers, different thicknesses of washers, until the tap ends up in the right position. And after about five or six attempts at using different permutations of different thickness of shim washers, I got it in the right position. Then I removed the union nut and the union cone, went into the outer part of the workshop, which was very cold, and silver soldered it together. And you can see here the end product. What you can't see in this clip is the other end of the pipe, which is just sticking out of the bottom of the boiler about 6 inches. The first thing to do is to tighten the union nut, then I know that this part of the pipe is going to be in this position. And then all I had to do was turn the boiler on its side and manually bend the other end of the pipe. After which I silver soldered the union cone onto the other end of the steam pipe, not forgetting to put the union nut onto the pipe first. So what am I going to do about all these gaps between the steam cylinders with the cladding? I decided to just use some Humbrol black enamel and painted them. But the cylinder cladding looked horrible, it really did look really bad. So then I wiped it off with a cloth. And after a few applications of paint and wiping the paint off, the cylinder cladding started to look okay. 
This cladding was very rusty before I took it off the engine and cleaned it all up, but it's never going to be a perfect smooth finish. I didn't want to keep over spraying it because you build up such a thick coating of paint, if it ever gets chipped it looks really bad. To be perfectly honest, this cast iron boiler casing is a little bit rough, it's a rough casting. I can see now when Stuart adapted this design, they used sheet metal for the sides, it's a better idea. So in this clip, while I've got the tin of black paint open and a brush full of it, I'm taking the opportunity to touch up some of the paint on the boiler casing itself, not forgetting to paint the screw heads of these 4BA countersunk bolts at one end and the 4BA cheese head bolts at the other end. When rebuilding engines, putting them back together once they've been painted, whether the steam locomotives or stationary engines, can be quite a nerve-wracking job, because inevitably some damage is going to occur, usually where the nuts meet the paintwork if you're not using washers, or even if you're using washers, you can still get damage to the paint. So this is just the way it is, and you get used to it. It's a bit of a pain, and when you're touching in these parts, it's really important to make sure you don't get paint all over the rest of the area around the part being painted. Unless, of course, the area around the part being painted also needs touching up. So what is there left to do now to complete this plant? I have a baseboard, which is not quite big enough, so I'm probably going to make another one, or better still, put some thick mahogany around this one, which will take it to the right size. And at this stage, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Terry, who was one of my viewers, who dropped me in a suitcase full of really top quality mahogany. You'll see me using this stuff fairly frequently for quite a lot of jobs during the rebuilding of steam engines, steam locomotives, and even steam boats. I haven't decided what to do with the old generator that came with this steam plant. I repaired it and it rotates okay, but it's not really very good, and the speed of rotation required for it to generate any electricity at all will mean that this small engine will just have to rev stupidly, and it defeats the object. I'll give this some further thought. Just as a before and after comparison, this is the engine when I first got it running, and as you can see, it was in a bit of a state. And now it looks considerably better than this, and it still runs just as well. I think it's time to put it all together now on a nice baseboard. But that will be in the next episode. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.